Are you considering buying the Sigma 16 millimeter, 30 millimeter, or 56 millimeter lenses, also known as the Sigma Trio? Let me tell you about a new lens that may just replace these. I recently was considering the purchase of the Sigma 30 millimeter and 56 millimeter lenses to complete the Sigma Trio in my own camera bag. Now these are excellent lenses and we're gonna discuss each of these in just a moment. However, there is a significant challenger to these lenses and the challenger may actually surprise you. It's not one of the other lens manufacturers. No, the challenger comes from within. It's the new Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens. So now you're faced with the decision. Do you go ahead and buy the Trio? or do you buy the zoom lens? Now in this video, I'm gonna provide you multiple levels of comparison to help you determine which direction that you wanna go with your photography, videography, vlogging, or streaming. And I'm gonna help you figure out how you wanna spend your hard-earned dollars. Now, before we get into the video, if you find value in this video, please share it and subscribe it. And I definitely welcome your comments below. So let's dive right in and have a look at these lenses. Let's look first at the specs. The Sigma 16 millimeter is a great lens for those times that the camera needs to be closer to the subject as it provides excellent wide angle view that allows you to encompass more landscapes surrounding your subject. It also serves very well for vlogging or streaming because of its wide angle. In fact, I use it almost exclusively for recording my videos for my channel. Now, if you're gonna use this lens for vlogging, it is the largest of the three in the trio. It measures about 2.8 by 3.6 inches and weighs in at 14.3 ounces, slightly less than a pound. To purchase this lens, you're gonna pay about $374 US at the time of this recording. The 30 millimeter lens comes in at 9.3 ounces and measures just 2.6 by 2.9 inches. This lens is a great option for video streaming, although you need more space in the location depending on the type of video that you're wanting. But if you're gonna use this lens for vlogging, it may not be ideal because of how much landscape you lose, unless you decide to put it on a longer vlogging pole, but that would wear your arm out pretty quickly. This lens is an excellent choice for portraits, taking snapshots, or just all around photography or videography. You can purchase the 30 millimeter lens for about $264 US at the time of this recording. The 56 millimeter, it tips the scale at just 9.9 .9 ounces and is 2.6 by 2.3 inches. This lens is known for its application in portrait photography. With the fast aperture of 1.4, it provides the beautiful close-ups with super creamy bokeh in the background and it's a lens I absolutely would recommend for any APS-C photographer. This lens is priced at about $404 US at the time of this recording. However, Sigma has recently come out with their own challenger to these excellent lenses. Instead of three lenses, could one lens do it all? Could it possibly be as good? Could this new lens take the throne? Could it be the king of the ring? Introducing the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens. Sigma's 18 to 50 millimeter F2.8 DCDN contemporary lens is compatible with APS-C size sensors and designed for full frame cameras. It provides a wide 27 to 75 millimeter equivalent for full frame cameras, allowing it to cover a number of shooting applications such as landscapes, portraits, events, street photography, in addition to an ultra-fast constant f2.8 maximum aperture throughout the zoom range, the lens design features three spherical elements that minimize chromatic aberration. Now let's talk first impressions. Everyone that you talk to will agree that the build quality of the Sigma Trio is excellent. All of them made with the same focus on quality provided at an affordable price. Now each lens features a fast f1.4 constant aperture for that low light shooting and super shallow bokeh or depth of field which gives you that blurry background that everybody loves. These lenses with their large aperture and super quiet autofocus make the Sigma Trio 
excellent options for recording or streaming video as well as photography. These lenses are small and lightweight. As an APS-C shooter, they fit perfectly with those Sony A6000 series bodies or for the new Sony ZV-E10. Compared to other competitors, you're less likely to be fatigued because of the weight of these lenses, which will let you feel like you can continue shooting longer so that you can get the best shots possible. Now with the small form factors and cost-effective pricing, it is amazing the quality of these lenses. Let me introduce the one downside right here to the Sigma Trio. Very simply, these lenses do not have optical steady shot within the lens. So you must rely on your camera body, a gimbal or a tripod to stabilize the image, specifically if you plan to do much with video. These lenses feel fantastic. They're extremely well made and you can feel it. They're dust proof, splash resistant, providing fast autofocus and amazing image quality. The focus rings have an excellent feel as they turn very smoothly with a non-mechanical, very comfortable rubberized grip. Now these are fantastic lenses and my first impressions are filled with excitement at the quality compared to the price. Basically, you're not gonna find value like this for a prime lens that's gonna achieve this level of quality as well as the feel and the construction and performance and the image quality. Now let's talk about the Sigma 18 to 50 F 2.8 DCDN contemporary zoom lens. Sigma does not disappoint with this offering. In fact, just the opposite. Upon opening the box, you feel a familiar sensation as the build quality looks and feels like that of the Sigma Trio. The focus ring located at the back portion of the lens barrel turns smoothly with little effort. The zoom ring provides just the right amount of resistance to allow you to extend the barrel without moving too quickly or making you force it open. It really does feel just excellent. Now I'll put the one con for this lens right here. Just like the Sigma Trio, if you're a vlogger or videographer especially, take note that this lens does not come with an optical steady shot in the lens. So you do need to rely on in-body stabilization or a gimbal or a tripod to reduce shaking. Now this excellent zoom lens is compact, it's lightweight, it makes it an ideal choice for a wide range of users, from amateur to professional, as well as anyone who just simply enjoys taking professional quality photos. Now there is a reason that I'm comparing this lens as a challenger to the Sigma Trio. It provides similar focal lengths to the Trio throughout the zoom range, as well as a very wide fixed aperture for a zoom lens, which in some ways can compete with the even wider f1.4 aperture found in the Trio. And, and you get these benefits along with the convenience of only one lens at approximately half the price of purchasing the three lenses of the Trio. So let's start our comparisons. If you're a vlogger or videographer and you move with your camera, let's look at the Sigma Trio first. Of the three lenses that make up the Sigma Trio, the 16 millimeter is the most suited for vlogging, especially when you're needing more of the background within the video. And with that F 1.4 aperture wide open, the bokeh blur is exceptional. However, it is the largest of the three lenses, even larger than the zoom lens. The 30 millimeter lens, while not necessarily the first choice for vlogging, is a smaller form factor and it makes it suitable lens for vlogging, bearing in mind the more cropped background because of the focal length. As well, the F 1.4 aperture really is noticeable with that blurry background. The 56 millimeter is indeed a very sharp lens for video and portraits, but it may not be a suitable choice for vlogging. That is assuming that you're gonna be pointing the lens at yourself. In order to fit yourself into the frame, you're gonna need exceptionally long arms or a long vlogging pole, which becomes really difficult to hold up for any length of time. The Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens, however, it gives you choices. It gives you options. It becomes extremely convenient in those instances that maybe you do want a more cropped in look and you don't necessarily wanna handle it in post-processing. You can choose your look at any given time and adjust your focal length accordingly. And with the fixed f2.8 aperture, it still provides a fabulous amount of bokeh behind you. It's small, it's lightweight, 
It allows you to continue vlogging with ease in varying environments without having to change your lenses, and you still get that crisp, clear image to make your vlogs stand out. Now, since this is a direct comparison, keep in mind that none of these lenses found within the Trio or the Zoom provide optical steady shot stabilization. The need for stabilization becomes more prevalent at the longer focal lengths. So keep that in mind. You may wanna use these lenses with a camera body like the Sony a6600, which provides in-body stabilization. So let's look at these lenses for streamers. Now, I've almost exclusively used the Sigma 16mm for my streaming and video recording. It is a fantastic lens as it provides a nice wide angle that can be cropped in the software if, if necessary, and it gives excellent clarity of image. This allows you to have the camera and the lens nice and close to you. And every streamer wants that nice blurry background to provide separation between them and the back of their studio. With that 1.4 aperture wide open, it definitely gives that to you. Now the 30 millimeter does look great as well for streaming, especially if you plan to do more of the talking head type videos. But with that f1.4 aperture, it provides a beautiful image if I do say so myself. But be prepared, you are gonna have to provide a greater distance between you and your camera to get the shot that you want. What that means for you is that you're gonna end up getting up more to make adjustments to the camera. The 56 millimeter is a great lens for videography and photography, but I would not necessarily say it's one that you want to really look at for streaming unless your subject is at some distance from the camera. If you're in a studio like myself, you really have to set yourself apart far away from the lens. And even that the look is going to be very similar to the 30 millimeter, but that's just dependent on what you want. Now the zoom, it may surprise you, that I'm actually recording this with the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens right now. While I normally would use the 16 millimeter, I found myself wanting the image a little closer than the 16 millimeter would provide, especially with my setup. So I'm recording with the lens set at 24 millimeters. The aperture is wide open at 2.8 and it still provides a decent amount of bokeh and, and I don't lose quality in the image because they've just made a fantastic lens. The flexibility and quality that you get with this lens is superb. So here's a quick look at each of the lenses of the Trio and their autofocus. And here's the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom. Now being made by the same company, we should expect similar results. And quite frankly, we're not disappointed with this. Again, not surprisingly, the zoom lens performs to the same level as the Sigma Trio. So let's talk about autofocus tracking. My wife surprisingly volunteered to be my test subject for the tracking test. So here's a quick look at the tracking of each of the Sigma Trio lenses. And here is the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens. 
as you can see, the tracking performs very similarly, which is not surprising. The benefit being that the zoom gives you the choices and flexibility without having to switch lenses in order to catch a particular subject in just the right moment. All right, so here we are looking at the 16 millimeter and 18 millimeter F 4.0. Uh, so let's see if we can jump into the center of these. All right. And so you're looking at these, these look great. Uh, now I would give the edge to the zoom lens, but both look really good. Let's jump down to the corner. And you can definitely see the foliage down here in the corner at F 4.0 uh, being better on the zoom lens than the 16 millimeter. All right. Let's look at the uh, F 5.6. So same thing. We're seeing uh, good clarity right in the center of both. And you notice the foliage down here in the corner starts to look much better uh, on the 16 millimeter. In fact, I would dare say it even gets the edge uh, over the zoom lens. All right, let's see how far out we go. 8.0, uh, we notice right away, both look clear. Uh, in, in fact, I would say the edge on this one goes to the 16 millimeter, but let's look at the foliage. Give us a good view. Yes, the foliage down here with the 60 millimeter at 8.0 uh, actually becomes more crisp and clear, but the zoom lens loses a little bit of that sharpness down there in the corner. Uh, and that's probably because of the severity of the barrel distortion. All right, and so we are at F11, and they both look great in the clarity of the center. Uh, I would give the edge actually at this point to the zoom lens. Uh, let's have a look at the foliage all right and i would say that they're fairly close but i would still give the edge actually to the 16 millimeter there at the edge and we're at f16 uh, so we have uh, lost a little bit of clarity here uh, in my mind of the 16 millimeter but uh, let's go down to the corner and have a look uh, and both are about the same as how I would look at it. Um, okay, so now we're going to jump to the 30 millimeter. We're starting at f2.8. Uh, and again, we're trying to compare. Uh, so we're not dealing with bokeh right now. We're simply dealing with image clarity. Uh, and what we see here is a, is a difference than the 16 millimeter. The 16 millimeter, both lenses had barrel distortion. But what we're seeing here is the 30 millimeter is the one with the barrel distortion, but the 30 millimeter or equivalent roughly on the zoom lens, uh, I've got it at 30.5. I tried to get it as close as I could, but you see it's got a little bit of a pin cushion effect on this one. Uh, so definitely something to uh, keep in mind. But we jump right into the center. Both look clear, both look great. Uh, so let's have a look at the corner. So we are seeing that the foliage on both look good. All right, but I would probably give the edge to the 30 millimeter. Okay, now we're at F 4.0. Okay, they look good. You can definitely see all the cracks in the bricks. You look at the foliage. Now the corner begins to go to uh, the zoom lens. So the zoom lens retains the, the quality down there in the corner. All right. And so now we're at F 5.6. Again, same clarity. Uh, I think both look great at this point. Uh, let's have a look at the foliage down here. Still the edge going to the zoom lens. All right. We're at 8.0. Again, both looking very, very good. All right, let's go down to the foliage here in the corner. Zoom lens is still uh, getting the edge. This is what I love about this zoom lens is it really does a great job of comparing to these uh, Sigma Trio lenses. All right, 
So here we are at F11 on the 30 millimeter, uh, both retaining uh, quality of image. And now, uh, now we begin to see that both of these in the foliage down here in the corner, uh, both are looking very similar. So uh, we start to see them come together. But you notice that the, the barrel distortion on the 30 millimeter uh, prime lens, as well as the uh, pin cushion uh, uh, on the uh, zoom lens, uh, both of those are retained throughout the f-stops. We're at f16, and so we begin to, I think, actually lose a little bit of cl clarity. Uh, and yes, we do definitely lose that clarity down here in the corner as well. All right, so far, the 16 millimeter and 30 millimeter, we've uh, done comparison. Let's have a quick look at the 56 millimeter beginning at 2.8. And both of these we see have more of a pin cushion effect. So barrel distortion is gone, but you can see there the, the, the lines uh, kind of dip in. Uh, so let's have a look at the center of these. And wow, both of these look great uh, right in the center at 2.8 uh, f-stop. Let's have a look down here in the corner. Now, the difference that you're going to see that you've got to be careful when we're comparing these corners is that the you get the extra six millimeters of focal length on the prime lens. So that's why you're not going to see the same foliage uh, and the same lineup uh, as you would uh, in the zoom lens. All right, so we have to really look at those bricks. Uh, they make a, a big difference. Uh, but I would say that 56 millimeter looks just fantastic. Uh, the 50 millimeter is no no slouch either. It looks good, but I would give the edge on this one uh, at 2.8 to the 56 millimeter. So we are now at 4.0, and right there in the center, both look fantastic. Uh, let's go down to another corner and have a look. All right, so both are looking good. Uh, I would still still give the edge to the 56 millimeter. That could simply be because of the extra six uh, millimeters of focal length, but I think it looks fantastic. All right, here we are looking at f5.6. So let's look at the center. Uh, and so we're seeing that the edge uh, is still going to the 56 millimeter. Um, let's jump over to the corner. So absolutely in the corner the clarity at 5.6 definitely leans toward the 56 millimeter uh, still looks good on the on the zoom lens but uh, that 56 millimeter just looks fantastic all right here we are at f8.0 uh, let's jump right into the center and both look great here in uh, at f8.0 let's have a look at the corner I would say that they're both looking about even at this point. Um, still probably a slight edge to the uh, prime lens. Now we're at F11 and we're having a look here at the center. Um, still giving the edge, still giving the edge to the prime lens. Uh, but I would say that the corner on the zoom lens starts to come a little bit, become a little bit more clear, uh, or at least in comparison to the prime lens. Uh, so yeah, looking great. All right, so we're going to look at the comparison of bokeh. And what we're going to see is we're going to look at each of these lenses, uh, and we're going to compare the widest aperture on the prime lenses of 1.4, with the widest aperture on the zoom lens at each focal length at f2.8 and then we'll compare them together both at f2.8 so what we're looking at right now is the 16 millimeter prime lens and the zoom lens on the right at 18 millimeters and both at their widest apertures and at this focal length you can definitely see the the bokeh is a little bit more creamy uh, on the 16 millimeter but because of focal lengths you don't really get to see it quite as much uh, in this particular instance, but uh, you do d definitely see that it is a little bit more blurry than the uh, f2.8. So let's look at the 16 millimeter uh, with the 2.8, and both the zoom and the prime lens look very, very comparable. 
Uh, in fact, I would, I would challenge you to find the differences. All right, so let's have a look now at the 30 millimeter versus the 30.6 millimeter on the zoom lens. Tried to get it as close as I could. Both at their widest aperture, 1.4 for the prime, 2.8 for the zoom. And you definitely see the difference in the bokeh effect. You can definitely see it in the trees as well as the bushes off to the left. Uh, so you, you can see that, but it's really a matter of what is most important to you and how really that mean, how much that really means to you. So let's look at the 30 millimeter at 2.8. And again, you definitely see it comparable, but I would still give the edge in bokeh to the prime lens, uh, even at the same settings. All right, and here we are at the uh, longest of the focal lengths. So the 56 millimeter prime lens on the left and the 50 millimeter of the zoom on the right. And uh, not only do you gain the extra six millimeters of focal length, but you gain an extra amount of uh, bokeh blur there behind the, the subject. And uh, my goodness, what a difference in this focal length in the bokeh. Uh, so uh, if you're using this for portraits, uh, you might want to consider the, the prime lens, but uh, the, the 50 millimeter at the, on the zoom lens is no slouch. And let's compare the 56 millimeter at the same uh, F2.8. So we see it much more comparable there, but I would still give the edge to the prime lens at 56 millimeters versus the 50 millimeter. That extra focal length, I believe, is gonna add uh, the, the needed effect to create that extra blur, uh, the bokeh behind the subject. So if you're looking for bokeh, uh, I would probably lean more towards the prime lenses, the Sigma Trio, uh, but if it doesn't really matter that much, if, if you can uh, feel comfortable with the bokeh that pr is provided in the zoom lens, uh, you can see that it, it does a good job in creating that separation. So let's talk recommendations. The Sigma Trio is renowned for its excellent clarity of image and the quality of build for fabulously low prices. Again, you do sacrifice some of the accoutrements of the higher end lenses, but as far as the glass itself and the image quality, fantastic. Many APS-C photographers, videographers, vloggers, streamers, look to the Sigma Trio not only as their first venture into the prime lens territory, but as their main lenses even as they grow. These lenses are a great choice for the beginner, the amateur, and the professional. But we're wanting to know today how the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens compares to the Trio. Why would you potentially look at the zoom lens first instead of the Trio? First, you get the same level of construction, the, the attention to quality as that of the Sigma Trio. They simply feel great and they work fantastic. Second, you get equal or even better image quality from the Sigma zoom lens as you would the Sigma Trio of lenses because they put the same level of attention into this lens, allowing you to take high quality images and videos. It even controls the chromatic aberration slightly better. Third, and in my opinion, the decision-making factor as to whether the Sigma zoom lens can potentially replace the Trio in many situations is the simple fact of convenience. When I took these lenses to downtown Disney in Orlando, Florida, wanting to use each of these lenses, I noticed that without even a real thought, I pulled the zoom lens out first and I ended up keeping it on my camera for about 95% of the time that I was there. With the 18 to 50 millimeter focal lengths, it is close enough to the 16 millimeter and the 56 millimeter lengths of the largest and smallest lenses of the trio, so much so that it can cause you to pause and ask yourself if you need that extra two millimeters of width on the short side or the extra six millimeters of length on the long side. Also, what are you doing that you need the wider aperture and the smoother bokeh provided by the prime lens compared to the 2.8 aperture of the zoom lens? As a beginning photographer, these are fantastic choices as the first three prime lenses that you would add to your collection. Even if you're a professional photographer, you're not gonna go wrong by adding these lenses to your gear. And to buy the full trio is gonna cost you just over $1,000 US. And quite frankly, even then that's an excellent value. But 
If you're looking for a greater level of convenience, something that you can take with you almost anywhere and have the right focal length and be able to take stunning photographs or video, then you may want to look at the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter zoom lens that you can pick up for almost half the price at $549 US. Now, when finances allow, I will look at completing my Sigma Trio by adding the 30 and 56 millimeter lenses to my collection. But for me, for now, I'm choosing to put the zoom lens in my camera bag. If you found this video of value, please like and share this video, leave me a comment, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. I do want to continue to put out more content like this for each of you. Now, here are some photos that I've taken with the new Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter DC DN contemporary zoom lens. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.